welcome to Come to the Table. We are live again from my kitchen table. And this is our very last Come to the Table episode for 2020. <laughs> Who knows if we have another pandemic um, <laughs> coming. But um, I am your host, Stephanie Frankie, along with my co-host, Tabitha Kent, and our dear friend friend Christy Cox. The recordings for these shows will be posted on the CCF YouTube channel and please send the links to your friends um, for them to watch and join in on the fun. While we are recording, um, please write to us during the, uh, during the show in the chat box as a way to communicate to us. Um, and then especially tonight, we are going to play a game and have you write in some different responses and questions. So, um, for prizes, I, of course. Of course. Of course. Um, I think most of you that have joined us tonight have used the chat box before, but if you haven't, can you raise your hand? I can't see you all. Okay, all of you know how to use the chat box. Okay. Awesome. I won't just tell you how to then. <laughs> we won't need it. Um, but you will also need a piece of paper and something to write with. So we're going to pause for just a second and let you guys grab a piece of paper and a writing utensil. <laughs> Elisa's determined. What kind I know, of she's, Elisa. I can tell. She's just <laughs> like, I'm going to win. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't do that. That's great. <laughs> She's got her game face on. <laughs> All of you that are watching live will be eligible to win the prizes that we'll be giving away. Prizes. Let's prizes. just make note that there's more than Everybody one. Everybody needs to know. And we are a little too excited about this. <laughs> 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 I am. Multiple. And we all played a part in choosing what those prizes would be. Um, so we're going to ask questions throughout the show. You participate by answering the questions and keeping track of your points. So I just wanted to um, start with a few minutes of just recapping um, what come to the table, what my hope was and um, the week after spring break when CCF announced that they would be doing services online, um, I just began praying as the head of women's ministries, what could I do to help encourage community and fellowship and discipleship to the women of CCF during um, this time um, where there was a shelter in place order. Um, I'm so thankful for the ladies now that I have been privileged to sit around the table with in my life, sharing life and drinking tea together. And whether we're laughing or crying or praying together, it's just a time of connection with each other, but also with the Lord. So come to the table was my invitation to all of you to be a part of this community and connect together. Um, that we could all have a taste of what it feels like to connect with each other and have fun, even though it's virtual. Um, and just that I envisioned this big table with us all coming together, each of us with our a team. mug, our favorite mug, with our favorite drink. And my hope and desire is that you left these times that we had together feeling well fed and nourished and refreshed. Um, in our very first show, we also talked about sitting at the table of the Lord. So our first question is, what is the scripture we used when we talked about the table of the Lord? So each of you can go to your chat box and write what you think that the answer is, if you can remember what that is that we used. Does anyone else have any guesses? Are we copying this? She has. Elisa made sure she put two capital letters at the beginning of hers so that <laughs> everyone didn't know. 
<laughs> Couldn't copy. <laughs> We didn't know if everyone just copied and pasted. <laughs> okay, Psalm 23 is the right answer. If you guess Psalm 23, you can give yourself a point on your piece of paper. And we are actually going to read Psalm 23. Christy's gonna read it for us. This is the Amplified Version. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me, I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. So Tabitha is going to share just quickly a few things that we talked about in regards to sitting at the table of the Lord. And when um, we shared in that episode, the first, first one, yeah. the first episode, we talked about three things um, that are important us, for us to do while we sit at the table of the Lord. And so we want to see what you remember, and can you remember what three things we talked about when you sit at the table of the Lord that are important for us to do? And you can write your three guesses into the chat box. Or on the paper, I guess. Yeah. Tabitha says you can write it on your paper, too, if that's easier for you. If you don't want to give the answers away to someone else. <laughs> this is hardcore <laughs> trivia. <laughs> We don't have any money or something. Does anybody remember? Okay. Oh, probably cheating. Yes, yeah, we said that would be cheating. <laughs> <laughs> but you have notes, so I'm gonna. Get, I could give you a point for that. We couldn't even find our notes. <laughs> well, tab, so go ahead. Okay, so um. The, the three things that the Lord was showing me that I just, I really felt like it was important as we were getting ready for this week to just go back to that, those basic things. And I know that um, for me, I've been very distracted since we started this and a lot has happened in the past couple months. And so um, I just really, really needed the reminder of what we're doing and why. And that simple invitation to sit at the table of the Lord just came back to me. And the Lord is like, remember, remember this, you know? And so I just want to share that again with you um, because I think, yeah, I'm surely not the only one that's been distracted, you know, the past couple months. And, um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about is the sitting at the table of the Lord begins with just sitting, just sitting down and him saying, come, and that we have to step out of wherever we are and sit. And in order for him to nourish us or to, you know, to, for us to find what he has for us there, we have to take that step and sit with him. And so <clears throat> um, I just feel like it was important to kind of refresh that invitation tonight for all of us to, to, to remind us the Lord is still inviting us to come to sit at his table and we just want to step out and so just in your mind's eye again we did this the first week and I just want to do it again just to close your eyes and just take a minute and sit down and God we just thank you that you've invited us here you've invited us not only to come together as sisters in Christ but you've invited us to sit with you and so we come, God, and we, we choose to um, step away from the distractions of the world and sit with you, the only place that there is true peace um, and true wholeness, Lord, this table of healing that you've set before us. 
in the presence of our enemies. God, I pray that each of us here tonight would just be able to enter in and to set our hearts um, fully upon you and trust you, Lord, and, and just sit and, and receive you in Jesus' name. Um, so one of the things that I was realizing is like when we sit down to eat at my house, my kids want to run around the room because they're distracted by a lot of stuff. And they won't just sit. And I realized the Lord is showing me like today I was thinking about it. And I do the same thing, but with the Lord, you know, when he's like, sit, I have stuff for you, you know, sit, I want to nourish you. Sit, it's time for refreshment or, you know, there's a, there's a word for you or whatever. And I'm like, ah, running around like, or crawling under the table or whatever it is, <laughs> being distracted maybe by the enemies that are around me or whatever is going on. And thinking that I have to do something other than sitting at the Lord's feet and, and allowing him to do that. And so just as I come, just inviting you to do that with me. And so those three things um, are uh, cultivating an eagerness for the word, for the bread from the Lord at the table and um, you, allowing God to nourish us through his word and that it might not always come naturally, but that's the only place where we can find um, like fullness, right? Mm -hmm. to, to be fed is through him and his word. And so that's the number one, or the first thing, eagerness for the word. And then um, the second thing is thankfulness. And um, I was listening to a song today uh, called Fight My Battles and it's talking about um, in the valley, I know that you're with me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow after me. And my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. And this is how I fight my battles. And it just was so powerful. I was in my bathroom with a towel on my head, just like worshiping and just like, oh God, I need this because I've been trying to fight in a lot of different ways and on a lot of different fronts. And he's just saying, your weapons are praise and thanksgiving. And it, it's time for you to just focus on that. Um, and that's how we fight. And so thankfulness is so key. It's powerful, powerful thankfulness and praise to the Lord. And it isn't just being thankful or just giving praise, but it is how we, um, walk in victory and in the presence of the Lord. And it's because of what Jesus did for us that, that we have victory, right? And it's just declaring that out. It can be such an amazing, powerful, prophetic act to praise and show thankfulness in the midst of our enemies, right? So the third thing, and I think it kind of goes with both of those, is contending, fighting. And it, you know, our weapons are, our, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Our enemies are not the people that we can see. Mm -hmm. It feels like that sometimes. <laughs> um, it's not our kids or our, or our husbands or our friends or our jobs or whatever, it is, um, is spiritual. Oh. And that, it almost seems like it'd be easier if it was somebody that we could see, we could blame it on somebody in front of us, but it's not like that. And so our standing and our fighting isn't about fighting. It's about standing in truth. It's about standing in our identity in Christ. It's about standing in who he is. And it's about reading the word and getting in the word, even when we don't feel like it or we're struggling or speaking out the word, just speaking out scripture, um, walking in thankfulness, even when it feels like it's really hard to find something to be thankful for or whatever there, there, that's our fight. And, um, part of that also is not leaving room for sin, you know, um, being able to receive everything the Lord has for us it requires that we lay aside all the sins that easily beset us and that we, we let those things go that we don't bring, that we, we don't allow space for that in our lives or at our table. You know, the Lord, you know, obviously he's working in our lives and we're not perfect, but, but we don't bring our baggage along and say, well, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to keep this because we can't receive from God when we're holding on to that stuff. So contending for righteousness, contending for contentment. We talked about that too. Um, and, um, yeah, standing in a position of victory because the Lord has invited us to his table where he isn't afraid of the enemies that we're in the midst of. 
he is not afraid of that and he knows where the victory lies and he's the one that's um, fighting on our behalf. So um, we can rest in him. But that sometimes that means, you know, our victory means we, we stand in what the Lord is doing. And so, um, yeah, I think it was just a good reminder to me. And I just felt like it was important that we all just remember that again, because I felt like, you know, I really had it. And then life happens. And it was just like, I felt really tossed around a lot. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord was just bringing that back again. And we want to um, we want to sit with him. So, yeah. So if you had anything close to the word, to Thanksgiving and contending, you can give yourself one point for each guess that you had mostly correct or all the way correct. But even if you were close, we were being generous and we'll let you have a point. Um, <laughs> so generous. <laughs> okay, so the next thing um, as part of um, come to the table, because I had had on my heart to do a women's ministries event called Blessed to be a Blessing, and we had to postpone that. Um, for the last several weeks, we have been interviewing a CCF-supported missionary. And so tonight, it is our privilege to interview my sister, Tabitha Kent. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> I've been here every week, but I almost, but I'm nervous. Now I have to answer questions. She will be put on the spot. Um, we actually wanted to invite you this time because it's Tabitha and I didn't mind putting her on the spot. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to invite any of you that have a question that you would like to ask her to put that into the chat box. And as time allows, we will try to get her to answer those, those questions while we're doing that. But Christy and I both have some questions that we want to ask her. Um, tonight, some of the questions will be a little bit different just because um, Tabitha has been serving on a foreign field. Plus you guys have seen her almost all of the weeks that we've been doing Come to the Table. And so um, my heart is um, to help us understand what it's like for a missionary who's serving on a foreign field and kind of the things that they um, go through. So if you have a question, feel, feel, feel free to write it and we'll get to those if we have, as we have time. So um, can you tell us when or how you were first called to be a missionary? Um, actually, as far back as I can remember, I wanted to be a missionary. And I don't know exactly what sparked that initially, but um, I don't remember not feeling that way. Um, but our parents were very pro-missions, and we, we would host missionaries often and um, for dinner or whatever. And so it was a normal part of our lives like we were very aware of that and so from a really young age I wanted to do that actually I wanted to take care of orphans that was my heart from really really young and then it really got strong when I was 10 years old and um, our parents went to Haiti on a missions trip with some people from our church and um, they they went without us but when they came back they were showing pictures and telling us about um, their experience. And it was just so, I don't know, it really just solidified that call in my heart, like this is what I'm supposed to do. And I never went away. Um, because as soon as I could, I was saving that money to go on my first missions trip. And I did that just after my 13th birthday. And um, it was, I've been doing it ever since. So yes. And um, I can't remember if we shared this before, but Tabitha has always had a heart for orphans and taking care of orphans. And even when we played with the dolls growing up, we were always caring for orphans. <laughs> so um, I don't remember doing anything else really with our dolls except for that. Um, but that's what I remember. And then now she has four adopted children um, who were without a father. Now and they have one. 
and yeah. now they have a family and it is very much a part of her mission right um, yeah and a calling is to yeah I didn't, family. I didn't know back then when I was 10 that it would mean the life that we have right now with our kids um but they are certainly our number one um calling and ministry and they're the priority you know that's what god called me to way back when and in his way in his time that's what we did what has surprised you the most about the culture or the people that you work with Whew. um I, I, I'm, I can be honest, right? <laughs> um, Honesty is she didn't want to answer this question. And I said, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. I, you know, a couple things as I have been thinking about this. Um, um, one is that it was very difficult for me. It is difficult to see you know when you go into another culture that is there's no it's not christian at all like there's no backdrop of christianity there's no history of that at all it's buddhism 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 and it's um so going in thinking that you you can make a difference you know you really get slapped in the face because it's the culture, you know, or even the religion, it's not just what somebody believes, but it's so much the way that people live. And they don't even know that it's their religious belief. It's just life. It's just part of their culture that's so deep that even, um, that even when people are saved, there's often so much um, of that, the culture, like the negative parts. There's a lot of beautiful parts about the culture also. Um, but the negative things that are sinful really are, are ingrained even then in the Christian culture. And mm -hmm. so that is difficult and shocking for me that it, uh, that I still struggle with that. And it does, um, it does tempt you to have hopelessness because you just see, oh dear, even these Christians are selling their children. Um, uh, as slaves, you know, and it's just unfathomable sometimes and it's it's hard But the other thing I would say it's not so much about the people But what I realized going in is is just the Lord humbled me a lot because I went from thinking oh I'm you know, I think we have this idea of missionaries and of ourselves right going in somewhere that we're bringing in You know, it's us. We're bringing in this truth to these people that are so dark and lost or whatever and what I realized is that God was already there. I didn't bring God in. You know, it's like that flip side. It almost like contradicts, but it's actually the same, is that there is a lot of darkness and there is a lot of, you know, darkness ingrained in the culture and the lifestyle, but God is there and he's already working and there are ties that love Jesus so much and God is using them and that I'm not the white savior coming in, you know, fixing it all or bringing in this grand idea like Jesus is there God the Holy Spirit's already working there and there isn't hope outside of that it's the Lord has really challenged me and humbled me like you are the answer Tabitha <laughs> you are not the answer for these people I'm already here and I'm working and you can join me in that and you can support the Thai Christians that are doing a mighty work that they can do more than I ever could and you can hold their arms up and you could encourage them and and just be obedient and know that it's the Lord's job to bring the change, just like it is in my own life or in anybody else's life, right? And um, just finding the, those, being able to recognize the Lord's work that's already happening and, um, and, and holding both of those things out, right? As true, like, yes, there's darkness. Yes, Jesus is there. Yes, it feels hopeless, but it's not hopeless because God is pursuing them more than I ever could. And, and just being able to walk in um, the understanding, but also the humility that I need God and that I, I can't answer any of these problems for them or change everything, but I can obey. Um, 
and I can bless those that are already there. So, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Does that make kind sense? Of, you kind of answered the question I was going to ask you. Oh, okay. Which was um, like the un spiritual unrest there, because you're coming from a a nation that's dedicated to God still. So there's a freedom, even though there's spiritual warfare going on. Whereas in your country, there's not. Right. It's. I looked it up. It was. I don't know what it was now. Where it is? Um, Ninety-four point six percent Buddhist, mm -hmm. um, four point three Muslim, one percent Christian. One percent Christian. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, <sighs> like the difference. Right. Do you feel a little bit of relief coming? I I know there's still struggle. Right. Coming from the country you serve in to yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in every place that we go, we feel a different kind of spiritual stronghold, right? But it is, it is very different um, going into a place where, like I said, there's no like Christian backdrop there at all um, in their history or anything. And when there's 1% Christian and it's, there, there is, you know, it's the enemy's territory in a sense, you know? Yeah. And there are small pockets where you see God moving and you see revival and you see restoration happening and it's beautiful. But the spiritual warfare is so, so strong. Just thinking about it, like there's a little anxiety with that because we felt it. Um, I was telling Christy earlier, you know, we, Lewis was trying to work with a project um, in one of the downtown areas where there's a lot of brothels. And um, they work with a lot of the children of the women that work in the brothels. And he was going kind of as a, you know, as a support um, for the Thai staff just to have another man there. Um, as they went around, they would visit the families and bring blankets or food or whatever. And, but every time, every time he was scheduled to go, the day before, the night before was chaos. It was just so clear that there was a spiritual attack and we were always like what you know what is this because we knew I mean it's a place where I think the difference is in a place like Thailand the spiritual stuff is really really obvious and feels big and it is because it's blatant you know and and maybe here we've got it but it's, it's more subtle which makes it more tricky sometimes but it's not so um aggressive maybe um but when you have brothels everywhere and you have people, children being sold and, you know, that's just kind of the norm. It just is so blatant, right? But anyway, he was getting ready. This happened multiple times. And one night before he was set to go in the next day, he had a nightmare. Um, and it was just like this huge presence over this neighborhood. And he was getting ready to walk in this big, dark presence, like a cloud over it saying, don't come here. Nothing you do will work here. If you come here, I will hurt your family. If you come here, it's going to be bad for you. Just like really aggressive demonic attack in his dream about this. And so he woke up and he's like, okay, this is kind of freaky, you know? And then he went back to sleep and the same thing happened again, the same kind of dream of you don't come here. I'm going to hurt your family if you come here. And you know, that's unsettling. And um, we really have to wrestle with that. Like, it was hard. I can't say that we really wanted to keep going. Like, it's really, really hard when you feel, you do feel like your family is being hurt and you do feel the attack. And then like, oh, are we really strong enough right now to handle this? Because it's not like, you know, I don't know. That's a whole other thing about when, where we have authority and where we don't, you know, um, where people have given over their area to, to the enemy. It's tricky. It's tricky. And we just, we just have to keep wrestling with the Lord about that. And um, a lot of situations like that where it's just really clear. And we just have to get to where, and my husband did a really good job of this, um, to where we, we would recognize when there was chaos happening in our house or we were fighting or just everything fell off that he would be like, wait, this is spiritual. 
and just stop us so that we didn't allow it to affect us so much. And it got to be where like we were like clued into that and where we could recognize our heat at any house. But it was, it was just really important that we were more aware of the enemy's tricks because um, he was working hard to beat us up. I mean, I wish I could think of more specific situations, but we have felt at times very, very beat up because of the spiritual atmosphere, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you have another question? Um, well, just a little bigger picture because you have kids from hard places. So you've adopted all of them. Mm -hmm. They were not born to you. Right. And you did not get them right away. Yeah. And a lot of horrible things happened to them. Mm -hmm. And they don't trust people easily. All the things that go on in their brain. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, spiritual warfare in yeah. itself yeah so it's not like you just have one thing you're dealing with you're dealing with children in your home that you're constantly trying to be aware of how to deal with them bring them back to the lord to the lord even yes yes yeah just constantly right because you know the spiritual tactics isn't from the outside you know it's it's um the stuff that they that we are walking through with them you know suffering with them through um the the journey that they're on with the lord and um definitely see how and it makes me angry it makes me so angry to see the enemy attack our kids when they are already so vulnerable in in some ways that a lot of kids aren't and um, that's something that we definitely, I mean, it happens anywhere, no matter where we are, we see this attack, but especially in a place that where there is, um, more blatant, um, stuff happening that we have to be really on top of it, really on top of it, yeah. because whether it's somebody walking by that says something to them or, um, what they're hearing from the friend next door or, you know, just, it, it would be weird things that we were just like, why, you know, just seeing that the enemy was using um, situations um, to try to get into their vulnerabilities and uh, oh, makes me angry. He wants them back. Yeah. 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 And that can happen anywhere. I mean, that part yeah. of that, like whether we're in America or in Thailand or anywhere else, it is that struggle to, to fight for our kids. Well, how tell, I mean, I know some of them already, but can you share just a couple stories maybe of how you've seen God use your kids on the mission field? For sure. I love this because in spite of like the hard stuff and even my kids' ages or like um, their uh, developmental issues or whatever, like I see God use our kids all the time. Um, and it, it's just so beautiful to me when, like, our young, um, he's not our youngest, our youngest boy who is on the spectrum and has a lot of challenges socially, but when it comes to loving people, he has something about him that he can do that better than anybody I've ever known. And we can go into situations where they're all strangers or they don't speak our language at all, or they're, um, you know, whatever. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if they can understand a word he says, and they usually can't. <laughs> Even if they speak English, they usually can't understand it. Um, he doesn't care how old they are. He doesn't care what they're wearing or what they look like. He will sit next to somebody and just make best friends with them and really love them. And I, I've seen, people soften to us or to whatever's happening or to whatever God wants to do because of him, where he's opened doors that I don't know that the rest of us could, because there's something special about the way that God uses him to, um, to just be love. Like he, it's just a really, really cool thing. And, um, it makes people feel special. So that's really awesome. And even, um, our oldest son for few, the last, for a few years, 
while he was there, um, he helped us lead worship everywhere. I mean, we, we led all over, you know, Thailand and Indonesia, Singapore, um, different locations and God has just given him such a gift of music. And so he was working right alongside us doing a lot of that. And, you know, even as we just have this memory pop up in my mind, but when we met his biological, because he's Thai, our oldest son is Thai. So we met his biological grandparents um, the first year that we were there. And then his grandmother died six months later. And um, so we were there for her funeral week, um, several days. And it was quite an interesting experience um, to be in a Buddhist funeral. But it was so, so cool because um, the Lord was just so with us. And so they have, you know, everybody's drinking and they have this tent and there's loud music and the musicians are even drunk. And it's just like an interesting experience, you know? And then they invite us to sing and it's nighttime and this is all in the streets. So the whole street is shut off for us to be there. Um, everybody kind of congregating outside and stuff. And they invited us to sing. So no gets out his guitar because they're really proud of him that he's a musician, you know? And, and, and I start singing. And we started singing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And just like we have a microphone and it's literally echoing into the whole like neighborhood because it's outside, right? And everything is shut down except for this funeral. And I'm just singing and nose playing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And it was just so powerful to do that together with his family, his biological family and all of their friends in their community they've been in forever um and just speaking truth and speaking light into that place it was really awesome and Nope was a part of that all of our kids were a part of that I mean they were all there and um just bringing in the light of Jesus not because we're perfect but in the middle of our mess the Lord just using our messiness anyway mm -hmm. Can you share what some of your hopes and dreams, either for yourself, your family, or your ministry, um, just for the next couple of years? Um, well, one of the things that um, I started working on this year before we had to come to the States was um, a baking business, actually. And some of you know that I did some of that here before we moved away. Um, but I just really had to let a lot of it go when we adopted our three younger kids and then we moved and I just, I felt like I couldn't even cook anything, but I've been waiting and waiting and just so many people had said, you should start a business. You should, um, bake things and sell them or whatever. And I just couldn't do it. Um, but earlier, um, in the fall, last fall, all of a sudden I woke up one morning and I was like, okay it's time, <laughs> like literally overnight. And all of a sudden, you know, I made this Facebook page, but the goal of it wasn't for me, but um, I have a very dear friend, Thai friend that um, she's, she's a single woman now. Um, she lost her son um, a couple years ago, her only son. And we've been really, really good friends for a few years. And she's been wanting to find more work for her that she can do even as she gets older. And, um, and she wants, she loves to serve the foreigners in the community. She just loves to serve. She's such a wonderful Christian um, woman that came from Burma a long time ago. Anyway, I wanted to um, make, to start a business for her, to train her how to do it. She's never had an oven, never baked before. Um, so that kind of stuff was really foreign to her, but she had the ideas of like doing certain kind of specialty items because she had worked with me already. And so I started to train her how to do it. Um, we created some really good grain free, dairy free bagels that are so delicious. Um, and we just started to sell them to people in the community. And um, so we wanted to develop it beyond that um, so that she could have like an actual shop where she can make stuff to sell. So that's what I was working on up until we had to come here. Um, so my heart, um, I have a vision for that, um, for her to be able to go back and get the business up and running and to train her fully to do that. Um, and that's just one of the things, but we, 
Um, there's also a church in South Thailand that we have worked with several times that we really love. They have an outreach to the Filipino community. Um, it's in a Muslim area. So that 4% or whatever Muslims, most of them live in South Thailand. Um, and they have an English camp for kids and it's just really great. And so we really hope to work with them more. Um, they're just a great, a great bunch of people and uh, they really love the Lord and they're making a difference. And so we want to, again, come and encourage them to be able to hold their arms up too. How can we pray for you specifically? <laughs> How long do we have? <laughs> um, I think one main thing would be like uh, just wisdom as we like navigate this next season of trying to figure out how to get back to Thailand um, and what that's supposed to look like. And as we all know, things around the world have changed a lot and um, there's still restriction about going into Thailand and we don't know exactly what that's gonna look like. And, um, but we really just want clear word from the Lord about how to do that, when to do that, how to make that happen and exactly where we're supposed to live when we get back there. Um, and I think the other major prayer need is for our kids. Um, one of the reasons that we're here in America right now besides COVID-19 is, um, is our oldest son. And we, uh, yeah, he's really had some struggles. And so we're working on um, finding some, the support that he needs um, here in the States now, he's 19. And so um, we need wisdom for that. And for all of them, like they've had to transition so many times lately and you know, Daniel, our 11 year old, he's just like, I don't want to leave. I don't, you know, he just, he just is so spent on transitioning, you know, moving across the world and then moving again once we got here and just feeling really unsettled. And so, you know, Thailand, they had been in Thailand longer than they'd been anywhere. anywhere. Um, and it was really, rough for them to leave that and now they love being here but then it, it's a transition again to go back and so we just need grace 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 on them um to to do all the things the lord's asking us to do and for us to have wisdom as we again as they're our primary and most important calling and ministry that we do that well um that we honor them and that we um, champion them as the missionaries they are also um yeah well i've invited um chris james if she would um pray for tabitha um i don't see any questions from you guys so um chris why don't you just go ahead and pray for tabitha with us sure God, thank you so much that we have this opportunity to sit here together and hear Tab's heart, to hear her dreams and her willingness to do whatever it is that you want them to do. And we just pray, just like this storm that blew through in my yard a minute ago, or everything was fine one minute and then it wasn't the next, and then the next minute there was rainbows and beautiful thunderheads, and that we would just trust you that. Um, the hard stuff doesn't last forever and beauty comes out of ashes and we just trust you God with all that's on Tabitha's heart tonight that she would um, just know that she is loved and she's not alone and that you are so good at taking what the enemy meant for evil and turning it into good we know God that you are going to use these kids to bring out stories of your extravagant love for those who humans failed. You are a father to the fatherless and we thank you God that you are enough for the lack that is in them. And we just trust you Father tonight to fill up all the little Kent kids with your love, your father love, your daddy love, help 
Tabitha and Louie to remember it's not just their love um, that makes up for all that, but you're ultimately who um, they push the kids toward and that you are the only one that can fill up all those little places in us that was failed by human beings. So we just trust you with with um, Noak tonight and Daniel and Thomas and Summer. And we just ask you, God, that they would ultimately find you as their perfect father and their perfect mm -hmm. companion that will never leave. Talk about not wanting to trans uh, transition anymore, Lord. You are, you are the steady rock mm -hmm. that they need right now, Lord. And we just ask you to flood in to those places right now and we just thank you god that you are also in control of all of their plans you know when all of this um covid restrictions are going to be lifted and you know how to provide a way back and so we just ask you god that your timing would be perfect and that they could look back on this time as something that you did well in their lives and we just trust you with all the details and we thank you for Louie and Tabitha and their family, and we ask you to just bless them abundantly tonight as they sleep and the weeks to come, that they would, even in, in the things that are going on here, that they would be, show, be showing off your glory and how good you are to everyone around them. And we trust you for the ending, even though we can't see it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Chris. I just want to say thank you for saying yes to God every morning that you wake up. <laughs> saying yes to your kids, saying yes to whatever you have for me, God. <sighs> and he's faithful. <laughs> he's faithful. And for saying yes to come to the table. Yeah. Come to the table would not have been what I had hoped it would be if um, Tabitha hadn't willingly given her time and energy and brain. Between the two of us, <laughs> I took, I took we only have a half a brain each, but then we put it together and it works okay. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, now I want to transition. This is the part that three of us have been so excited about. Besides the fact that I actually get to have more than two of us at my table, um, we have um, our prizes and a game to go with that. And so have your paper ready and your chat box ready. Um, this is our favorite things. How it's going to work is She's going to take a bite of tuna. Um, how it's going to work is um, Tabitha is going to randomly hand an object that we have off to the side here. She will hand it to Christy and then one to me and then she will do one. It's random. Random. I just want to make sure that you understand that. <laughs> um, but when that item is shown and you see what it is, it is one of us chose that to be one of our favorite things. Does that make sense? And so we want you to guess whose favorite thing you think that is by writing the name into the chat box. <laughs> I'm hungry. She's not ready to pass it on. I'm ready now, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Are you starting, Christy? Go ahead, you can start. Okay, this is a beautiful green glass glass. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of our favorite things, but you can guess whose favorite thing it is. Mine, Steph's, or Christy's. Write it in the chat box now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be as awkward as possible. <laughs> it makes it more it fun. It feels really awkward right now. <laughs> it's okay. I succeeded. Oh, I, I, think think it's I think it's just you. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> okay. Everybody's guessing Christy so far. Stephanie. 
Is that everybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's it. Anybody else? It is. The answer is Christy. So if you wrote Christy, give yourself a point on your piece of paper. Well, it's almost everybody. Good I job. Can't believe you Are you predictable? I didn't think. How am I, I didn't think, I didn't they, would think they would guess me. Okay, another item, please. Um, spatulas. Whose favorite item is spatulas? Didn't describe them. I messed them up. <laughs> <laughs> for baking, for cooking, for scraping, for licking. <laughs> Especially licking. All the things. Silicone? Made out of silicone. silicone. A wooden handle tied with a nice little bow. Super cute, great color. Okay, got everybody in there? Ooh, we gotta remember who's, where it ends and begins. That looks like everybody. The answer is me! I love these! <laughs> if you yes, picked me, you get a point because silicone spatulas are essential. Okay. <laughs> is that awkward enough? <laughs> okay, let me do it. No. I lied. M&M's with peanuts in them. In a yellow box. <laughs> Sunshine. <laughs> Whose favorite thing are peanut m &Ms? I wish Patty Forney was on here because when I went to Patty with Patty Forney to Africa last summer, Patty always packs on a trip a huge bag of peanut m &Ms. And she just brings them out randomly, <laughs> but she doesn't want to run out. But she's not here, so it's not her favorite thing, but it's one of ours. Let's see yes. what we got going on. Christy, 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 Christy. You guys are right. The right answer is Christy. You are very predictable. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Okay, is that you now? Can you guys see what this is? It's a chocolate bar. It, at least it says mine. <laughs> is that your favorite thing? <laughs> chocolate bar with raspberries, dark chocolate. Tart raspberries, dark chocolate. Whose favorite thing is this? Does it have to be this particular chocolate? Or can it be you? Lots of chocolate. Whose favorite thing is chocolate? It's a mist of everything most people It is times. And most people didn't even guess that. Really? Yeah. They what? guess you. Me? My favorite thing is chocolate of various kinds. Mostly dark, dark, dark chocolate. This one has tart raspberries in it. So if you picked my name, you get a point. Looks like Monty's the only one. Wow. So Chris says she didn't think that you could have dairy. There is no dairy in this. I only eat non-dairy chocolate. And there's a lot of it out there, thankfully, to choose from. <laughs> non thankfully. thankfully, I won't tell you how many bars of this I bought today. <laughs> but anyway. And my mom didn't even put me on. No, <laughs> she put me on. What? Okay. Um, oh, you, it's your turn. Okay. This is a box of assorted tea. It shows blackberries on the front, but actually inside it is filled with various kinds of assorted tea bags. Whose favorite are these tea bags? Just the bags or the tea bags? <laughs> or the tea that you can make with the tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> Just add hot water. <laughs> Just, 
<laughs> if I hold this, it'll be extra awkward as a microphone. <laughs> okay, Stephanie, Stephanie, Steph, 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 Steph. If you guessed Stephanie, <laughs> you are correct. Give yourself so a point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Books. Who doesn't love books? This one is Wherever the River Runs by Kelly Minter. How a forgotten people renewed my hope in the gospel. Wow. But it doesn't have to be this particular book. Books. Books. You needed to say that louder. For the love of the books. <laughs> You're awfully predictable. <laughs> As if I haven't given away books on the show before. <laughs> it's a little bit obvious. <laughs> I've actually um, have a few books in mind, and I had a very hard time picking a favorite. She did. I didn't pick a favorite, but this is one <laughs> that I read recently that I would highly recommend to to others, um, <laughs> anybody, not her, <laughs> she, she, she's not a reader. So if you guess Stephanie, give yourself a point. Okay, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Love, who doesn't love love? <laughs> Whose favorite thing is love? A little wooden, Stencil sign. Sign. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Whose favorite is this? It's a good thing you showed that. It goes against good against your shirt. It does. <laughs> Even though I would be like, what is that? Oh, she's <laughs> up a little bit behind your cup. <laughs> Love. If you guess Christy, you're right. Give yourself a point. No, come no. on, people do, but mostly. <laughs> All righty, tidy. Whose turn is it? It's my turn. She just oh. did it. I just did. It's your okay. turn. To go or not to go. Or, <laughs> or not to go. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> or hot or cold because. Sometimes you need tea hot, sometimes you need tea cold. But it's always about tea, as we all know. <laughs> Bubba cake. Bubba brand. With a straw. Insulated. Cold for 18 hours, hot for six. Whose favorite thing? I lost track of where oh, okay. the name started and ended, but wait, wait. Oh. Okay. For the insulated mug, if you put Tabitha, you guessed right. And you know why? Because tea is meant to be hot. And if I make it in a regular mug, such as this. Cold. It's cold. And I got sick of drinking cold tea every day because I don't have enough time to sit and enjoy it while it's hot. And in Thailand, I don't have a microwave. So you can't reheat it, you just drink it cold. But I decided, forget that, I'm gonna get a bubble mug. <laughs> so Actually, when we met a couple weeks ago to get ready for Come to the Table, she made me tea and put it in a insulated mug that I could not even drink my tea until I left and I had to bring it home. <laughs> it was still too hot. It kept it. It works hot. well. It works well. <laughs> okay, our last item. Beautiful flowers, plants. Whose favorite thing? Beautiful red. Any color. Beautiful, 
beautiful expressions of the glory of God. I mean, I mean sincerely. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yes, they are. Okay, if you guessed, Tabitha, I mean, <laughs> they're mine. <laughs> she doesn't even know. <laughs> if you guessed Stephanie, give yourself a point. Because that's whose it is. Yes. <laughs> not mine. I, oh, I do not like my favorite thing. I love flowers too. But. Okay, <laughs> that's the last item. Y'all need more tea? We need something. We need something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure tea will help me at this point. But, um, what I want you to do now is to tally up the points that you have earned throughout the show. So with our questions at the beginning and then throughout this time of our favorite things. And then um, once you do that, can you write the number of points that you earned into the chat box? I just realized that we didn't come up with a tiebreaker. We had three, three people. Well, unless there's more than three. Oh, no. Somebody had more than eight. See what I told you? Oh, no. That's not everybody. We got a couple more. Five, six. Moni? How many points? She's not on there yet. Does she have that still? I had nine, but I cheated on the notes. <laughs> <laughs> Without cheating, Lisa, how many points did you have? Two. Eight. Wow. Lots of eights. Hmm. Are we missing someone still? I think we're still missing Moni. Sue. So, no, she there. too. Monty, you count. You can win a prize. Well, Julie, you didn't put a, a one in there either. I think we're missing people. I won last time. I defer, she said. <laughs> okay, we got a lot of eights. So, you're the boss? What do we do? I don't know. We have a lot of tying going on here. There's Lots of people so we, that got eight. And draws. eight. I'll do it. Okay, tell them. Okay, Tabitha is going to write out some names. All the people that got eight. Because we tie. We have three prizes. But there's more than three of you that got eight. So eight ties. Okay. Okay, so while she's this. doing that, can you read? Can you see? Can I, that far? <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> Elisa said that she had nine. Oh, Chris is saying that Elisa had nine. <laughs> Elisa said she had eight if she took out the one that she cheated on. Elisa. Monty, it would be okay now there's not very many of us for the rest of this if you want to um, turn the audio on. Yeah, unmute everyone for us. Yeah, and while she's doing that, I just want to um, give a couple announcements. Um, one is that on Thursday, evening, June 25th at 6.30, the Women's Ministry team will be hosting a meal for any women that want to join us at CCF. Um, we're going to set up some tables to accommodate those who still um, prefer to have some physical distance. From others but we will provide the main meal including a dessert made by our very own Kent. with some special spatulas <laughs> <laughs> um, you will need to RSVP though because we will need to know how much food to prepare and so information will be sent out during the next couple weeks um, letting you know how to do that but I am very much looking forward to having a time together in person um, where we can share in fellowship and a meal together and um, my table will not have to be virtual for you um, 
I would be very excited to have you all join us there. Um, again, the date is June 25th at 630. It's a Thursday evening. It is not a no, it's not a potluck. Um, it is on like the evening that our potluck would normally be, but we are actually providing the meal for you that will um, help limit the amount of people that are in contact with your food. And we can kind of control that a little bit more to make sure that everyone can um, feel comfortable and safe, um, but still have time in fellowship together face to face. So um, I want to say thank you. Um, all of you, I think that have joined us tonight have been pretty much regulars for us on Come to the Table, and it's just been a special time um, for each of us. And I, um, I am ready to be in person with everybody. <laughs> and so I just felt really done, but today I'm actually a little bit sad that this chapter is done. I think um, it was what God wanted for us in this season i think that he's encouraging us now um to see each other's faces and see each other's smiles and for those that can um for personal touch you know hugs and things like that that god created us for that and so thank you guys so much we would still love to hear from you in the next little bit if you want to share with us maybe what God has spoke to or what he's done in your life during the last little bit um, through Come to the Table. Um, that would just be an encouragement to us. Um, did we draw names? We're going to draw names. This is super exciting. Now we see who wins. You all did great. You had a lot of answers correct. But you all hide too much, so <laughs> we have to narrow it down a little bit. But should we tell them what the prize is? We didn't say that. Yes. The prize is one of all of these favorite things. So each winner what? will receive <laughs> each of these favorite things. So you get a mug, the flowers, the spatula, the chocolate, the M&Ms, the love, and the book and the tea and anything else I might have forgotten, it will be your prize. So this is very special when three people are gonna get it. So. All the love, all the love. <laughs> One other thing that we wanted to include and we forgot, so hopefully we'll, um, between the three of us, we'll pull ourselves enough together that it will come in. Um, the actual prize was we are all gonna stuff in our favorite recipe oh, yeah. into that collection. Cool. So we'll have to remember to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, Christy. The first winner is Michelle. Michelle Bennett. Yay. Yay. Thank y'all. Congratulations, wow. Michelle. I'll Yay. connect with you later about how to get that to you, get this collection to you. Sounds perfect. Okay. <laughs> to the bottom, <laughs> all the way to the bottom. Let's see. The next winner is Sue. Sue Haynes. All right, Sue. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> you get the collection of our favorite things. And the last one. Elisa. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can run. You can run, but you cannot hide. <laughs> You're actually blessing for taking notes. <laughs> it was meant to be. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Well, I did want to just leave um, you all with just a little bit of an encouragement, and it's been on my heart, but. Um, I didn't write down any words, <laughs> so, any notes, so I, it's just coming out, whatever is on my heart, but I really felt like, um, I wanted to leave this time of
come to the table where I've invited you to come to my table to extend an encouragement to you <coughs> to make an effort to um, invite someone to join you at your table. And yeah. um, those of you that know me or um, have heard me speak mm -hmm. before, know how important community and fellowship is mm -hmm. to me and how much I believe that it's part of God's design of the church. And um, I just wanted to encourage you to invite someone to come and share life over a cup of tea or coffee if you have to, <laughs> or iced tea or even water with a mint will do. Um, but to do that, and if you are um, at a place where maybe you don't feel comfortable necessarily having someone into your home yet and sitting at the table with you to extend hospitality to someone off your front porch or in your backyard that um, the coronavirus dies almost instantly with exposure to the light. So you would be completely safe to host someone to sit off your front porch or um, in your backyard in your backyard and extend hospitality to them. I my daughter and I did the Bible study that Carrie Holmes did in the fall. And it was just a reminder mm -hmm. to me that hospitality is not something that certain people have a gifting for and that only those people should do it, but that um, it was in the epistles told to all of us to practice hospitality. And so um, I just think it is a way that we can communicate to someone else how much we love and value mm -hmm. them, um, even a very simple way, even if it is in a backyard with a glass of lemonade or iced tea, that can just show some um, how special they are to you and to God during this time, especially. I think it's just really important. So just wanted to leave you know, this come to the table with an invitation for you to invite someone to come and join you at yours. Thanks again, you guys. You have Thank you. a blessing to us, and um, we're glad that you've all joined us here for Come to the Table.